And so here's, there's a couple of really interesting, so you just touched on, I think what she is claiming one of her concerns is because this, this mother is saying, well, I, I'm not against the, the transformation, but I want him to slow down because allegedly this nonprofit group has been helping with the really aggressive uh, female hormone, whatever. But then as so many of these cases have these twists, one of the aspects of this that's concerning to say the least is that, um, this kid lived six months financially self-supporting away from her and she had sort of separated herself from this kid. And then now she finds out that this is going on and saying, well, there was no official emancipation, which Minnesota doesn't have a convention for that here, according to this article. So now she didn't want to be the mom. Now all of a sudden she's the mom again. Um, it's, this is a money grab. It's, yeah. So, no, I, I, just, I mean, I understand the the issues involved and, you know, probably some things do need to be, um, uh, taken care of. I mean, I would do the same thing if somebody wanted a, a, a breast enhancement or breast reduction or wanted to work on their nose or, or, or anything that's going through there. If you're altering a body, um, the person may not be done, but I, this just seems more like a, um, uh, a money grab. Right. I just, I, you know, it's going through there and, uh, uh, yeah. Although I do I feel like mm-hmm. I think there could be some precedent to being to setting ages for or if not particularly an age, I would say um physical benchmarks. Sure. Uh, yeah, because yeah, everybody ages at a different mm-hmm. uh, 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 a time frame. I mean, what's driving me insane about um like insurance right now is, or investing or different things, you know, a lot of it's done by age. Well, I am 51 years old, but my kid is only in her mid teens. She's not in high school. Well, you know, 25 years ago, when or 30 years ago, when a lot of this stuff was set, by now the kid would have been like out on their own and mm-hmm. I would have had been in a different spot in my investing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not there, but it's only done on age. Mm-hmm. And so you just, uh, I was uh, filling out medical forms about asthma and it was really like it had more to do with, I mean, there, everything was absolute on there, you know, does it keep you from doing things? Well, no, because I still do the shit, you know? So the, there's every, you know, the, looking at almost every piece of paperwork, you're like, who made it? What was going through there? What are the rules? You know, when you're looking through there and now you're talking about physically transforming a body mm-hmm. when someone's under 18, well, it's probably, you know, more than likely legal because you, you, your medical stuff is there. But on this particular case, were was it the right medical thing to do? Right, because it, it more, is yeah, an elective, yeah, surgery. Because people, I mean, not the the choice of being transgender is not elective, but many transgender people do not choose to go through surgery. So in that for way, for either a psychological is, or, phys- yeah, or or yeah. or monetary reasons, mm-hmm. whatever those reasons are. Yep. So in that way, it's elective. Um, so it it just seems surprising that anyone could could do a a, a body altering elective surgery to that extent. While like you can't buy cigarettes, but you could or go vote. get a breast implant. You know, I'm I'm obviously or, or have a, your, or have top surgery. Right, right. Yes, exactly. That's a better example because obviously because that's um, getting like, a breast exam. You know, larger breasts because you want them as much different than than, yeah. than being transgender. I don't mean to equate the two, but... Well, and let me throw something in there, and it's not at all to be in, insensitive, but, um, you know, we don't... We're just now really... Transgender is is very much in... We're seeing more. Everybody's learning about it. I mean, I just saw... I was getting a pedicure yesterday, and Katie Kirk was on The Ellen Show. She just did a huge documentary on... And, and she talked about how much education she had to get to even understand the terms, to even ask questions, to understand what people were talking about. It was really interesting to hear her talk about being able to do the documentary. But at least there's vocabulary now. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there was not even vocabulary. And I think that is why people are like, well, well you know, it's, it's trendy. No, it's not trendy. We simply have the vocabulary. The language, and, and the as language, Katie put it. The yeah. language to deal with the, Even the folks that are know that they're not alone. Yep, and that the, you know they know how to describe what's going on, and that's why you've got all the stuff going. People are like, oh my god, it's new. No, it's not new. Right. We just know now how we to, have the language. Fifty years language. ago, a transgender man 
was a cross dresser. Right. And you don't you don't know what transgender is. You don't understand you, the, the how term to didn't exist. Right. You and you don't know how to deal with what you are feeling. You don't have any frame of reference for what's going on with you. So obviously you're not gonna come out and say, I am transgender, because no well, one, we yeah, don't know what that is. is. You know, and, and you're also dealing with the issue of consent here. She feels that she needed consent over her 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 kid's body. And I'm not exactly sure because we're dealing with that, I I don't want to make my kid kiss someone they don't want to or hug someone they don't want right. to. You know, that person is, each person should be autonomous. I mean, you I, and, I, and I think if you can, you know, so it's all, you know, it's all, you know, brought up into that whole item. And I'm like, oh. Well, let me, let me throw this question out to the parent in the room, um, mm-hmm. Colleen. Here's because here's another one, and if and this is not meant to be a disrespectful question, but it's I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, so I think a lot of us can agree that we're different people at whatever ages in the room we are now than we were when we were 17. Transgender is a lot different, but like I have a nephew who um, he's now 19, but before he was 18, he had almost 30 tattoos, right? And I'm thinking, wow, I wonder how he's gonna feel about that when he's 35. Or, you know, whatever. And he may still love him and that's fine. But it's like, ooh, you know, maybe just wait a little bit longer to see who you're going to be because you're making, you know, permanent changes. I guess my question is, you know, what kind of process did this um, young person go through? Um, and, and is there adequate help to make sure that this is what they want or to, to diagnose where they really are? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that people should be not allowed if they truly believe. But I think that, don't you think before like really serious alterations to that can't be reversed happen, that they, they should have some sort of a process? You know, I don't know. I'm I, asking. I, yeah, I, I know. I believe there, you know, I believe there is, it, and, you, and there's a lot of work that goes up to that point. Okay. And it's going through there and it's uh, for almost any, you know, any surgery, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot of consent. And, you know, this person who was younger, um, had the advantages that someone I know that is just almost 50 did not have. Um, at 17, this other person had no, knew something wasn't right but didn't have the vocabulary, yeah. didn't know. And, it, you know, because of where we are in 2017, this other person does know yeah. and can do it. So it's, a, it's, it, it's the amount of information that you have. I know almost no one that didn't know as soon as they could figure out, I mean, it never occurred to me to think one way or another, but almost everyone I know that doesn't think in a heteronormative sort of concept that didn't know at one point that something was not right. I mean, not the same in them as they saw in popular yeah. culture. Yeah. And, and so, but the, the, this younger person had the, the advantages of there being a system in place mm-hmm. to do this. So that they're not, struggling for the next 40 years. Yeah. And you know what? Um, this story doesn't have enough background to say, I mean, cause Colleen, you and I talked about, um, not too long ago about a, uh, a, a boy, uh, who is transgender, a girl, and she's 12 or 13, the age that you would shop at justice. And finally the, the mom and justice opened their doors to this kid mm-hmm. and decided to maybe change their marketing and, and take out the for girls, you know, because this kid didn't feel welcome. And this mother was like, no, this kid absolutely knows, you know, that there's a wrong body situation and we're moving forward with this. Mm-hmm. It doesn't talk about that here. Mm-hmm. And based on the fact that this woman ignored the kid for six months, I'm guessing there wasn't a real good open door to right. communication. Yeah, I'm sure so there's So who knows? <laughs> more, I don't know. <laughs> I, for what I, under, I, will, I have to check from what I understand, it is actually a fairly long pr- process that does include required counseling. Okay, great. To start Good. the the transition process including medications and okay. obviously up to surgery. Yeah, cuz this but. makes it sound like this kid was just given access to all these insane hormones without any, you know, qualification, no which is hard to believe. At all, yeah, yeah which is hard thing. to believe. Here, kid, have some yeah. Rounds. Well, guys, we gotta, we've got we got some other great stories and more transgender news for next week and other stuff. We got to wrap it up here, but Megan don't stay away so long. I'll try not to. Well, if people... No, I was going to... Uh, I can't help it. People keep shopping at our stores. Keeps mm-hmm. us busy. Well, all righty then. And <laughs> can't send, complain. Send Michael in here to talk about prostate mm-hmm. toys. Yes. So, and, and Colleen will be back, the Great Northern Sex Cast, next week. A lot of great guests on tap. And don't forget to check out uh, our live video that Colleen posted on the Facebook page. Yeah, and the little caramaroling. It, uh, Megan had a great description of it, but now you can actually see what we were talking about. 
Beautiful. Okay. Have a great week, everybody.